Hello students, welcome to my video lecture on fabrication and processing of advanced composites. So this is ME61011 which is taught as a postgraduate course at Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. I am Nilanjan Vastakladar, Assistant Professor of the Department. In this lecture, we will learn the history of composite materials, how the composite materials have evolved, then the type of different composite materials, natural and, natural and synthetic fibers, types of resin matrix, and advantages of composites. Now, there are some books and online resources which I would like to recommend to you, uh, of which this is the most important one, Manufacturing of Polymer Composites, which has been followed in this uh, video lecture series by B.T. Astrom. An Introduction to Composite Materials by D. Hall and T. W. Klein. Comprehensive Composite Materials by Anthony Kelly. Automated Composite Manufacturing this is an edited book by Hua. And you can find reports on World and Indian Composite Market Reports, which are available online. Coming to the history of composite materials, so it has been reported back in Exodus by the Egyptian civilizations where straw reinforced clay bricks have been made from River Nile. Now this evolved to papyrus, the alternate stacking of strands of papyrus seeds. You can also understand the word paper has come from papyrus. So this has happened up to 3rd millennium BC. Next, in 108 AD in China, the cellulose fibers have been soaked, ground, strained and then dried so that one can write on, on those uh, cellulose fabrics. Now this is how the paper manufacture has migrated across the world as you can see from China to India to the Middle Eastern part to the Europe and finally to the US. Now coming to the basics of composites. Now the word composites have come from componere, which is a Latin word, which means composite. Or in other words, to easily remember, we can say that composites is nothing but something which is composed of more than one material. So here we can see there is a container with materials A, B, C, A can be fibers, B can be fibers, or C can be a matrix. Now when we say fiber, this is essentially, we use the word reinforcement, that means the matrix is reinforced using the fibers. Now how the fibers can be reinforced? So they can be either continuous, like as we call as in a fiber, which are like long cylindrical strands, or they can be dispersed as fillers, maybe short fibers, or just maybe ground fiber powders. So either in a continuous phase or in a discontinuous phase. And typical applications. Now you can see the dental filler. So here fiber, short fiber, uh, a short filler paste has, uh, are used to fill the, uh, the dental cavities. Also, if it's a very stiff fiber like the carbon fibers, with the help of uh, this uh, robotic arrangement, long fiber composites can be made. And this typical structure is like the uh, part of a wing, wing of Boeing 777X. Now, coming to composites, how the load is shared. So when you're saying reinforcement to the matrix, what we actually mean is the load is first shared by the matrix, but the matrix is not as strong as we desire or as stiff as we desire. So we reinforce the matrix further to increase its stiffness, to increase its strength, to increase its directional properties. Now, if we look into these two cases, case one and case two, so in case one, what we see is, so the fibers are along this direction of the arrows. So as if we want to place the fibers in such a direction, in such an orientation, such that it takes the maximum load along the direction of these blue arrows. Now, it may happen that we not only need, need it to be strong in these directions, however, we need it to be strong in other directions as well. So what we do, then we have to disperse the uh, fibers or the fillers in the matrix in such a way that it gives a quasi-isotropic nature. That means the stiffness, the strain, the material properties are nearly isotropic in all the directions. So that is the basic difference between continuous and discontinuous phase. So matrix in general is a continuous phase, 
fibers are dispersed or discontinuous phase, but again the fibers can be long fibers, the fibers can be short fibers. So these are some of the questions that automatically would come to our mind I, and I would request you to think on these aspects. So question 1, who is taking the maximum load in case 1 and in case 2? What are the assumptions in load distribution? So just now I have explained that the load is primarily taken by the matrix. However, if you reinforce it with a stiffer fiber, then the load will be taken by that particular fiber in that particular orientation if we want the fibers to take up the load. Who is giving the shape to the composite? Now, obviously, the matrix itself is giving the shape of the composite. So in both the cases we see this looks like a box shape. So who has given this box shape? It is the matrix. Any advantage or disadvantage on the properties of the fibers or reinforcements and the matrix? Yes, now you can think of it. The reinforcement, the properties of the uh, reinforcing fibers, they actually guide how the load will be transferred, how the load will be shared or how the load will be distributed. So what is stiffness? What is strength? I request you to draw and understand the explanation of the stiffness and the strength. And what is the environmental tolerance to high temperature, water, chemicals or UV light? Now all these exterior, exterior uh, environment, the chemicals, the water, uh, the UV light, so they can be put as a property feature on the matrix itself. So that's when the matrix is curing along with the reinforcement, the outer layer of the Composite structure is it is the matrix itself. That means if my matrix is good enough to tolerate high temperature, water, chemical, and UV light, then the outer surface of the composite that is protected. Thank you for watching my channel. Hope you have enjoyed it.